Now our rotary compressor. Our rotary is easy to identify because it always has an accumulator, a suction line accumulator built into it. They're can very can-like. The discharge at the very, very top side and the suction input is on the very, very bottom. So they're very simple little compressors, but what's different about this guy is the whole entire casing is high pressure. So these casings are really, really thick. So all this is high pressure. It pushes the high pressure through the motor and out the very top. The suction comes through our suction line accumulator, protecting the compressor from any liquid refrigerant, but it goes straight into the pump action. So right through this hole here, goes straight into the pump. In the reciprocating and in the scroll, there's both a place for that liquid to go, at least a little bit, but in this one, there's none. That's why it always has an accumulator. So here we can see our rotary. Now this one's been uh, taken apart for a while, so a little bit of rust, but we have this little keeper pin that keeps it pushed in. So the suction comes through a hole right here and fills up this cavity. As this turns, it starts squeezing it through the discharge. There's gonna be another hole right here, discharging it through the top. We'll see if we can make this turn. So the high pressure will keep this pin pushed in, separating the low side from the high side. As I turn this, I'm not going to be able to keep that held in at the same time. So what we're going to do is turn this. Now we've got the suction side coming in here, and this is the discharge side. So as I turn this, the suction is going to get bigger, the discharge is going to get smaller. So watch the discharge side first. See how that cylinder now gets smaller? The hole for a discharge is right in there. And remember this pin is pushed all the way in. So see the size of this hole is going to keep getting smaller and smaller. Now as we do that, notice this hole over here is increasing. So we're sucking in some more low pressure. And now we've discharged out right there through the top all of our high pressure vapor and now we have our suction side is now trapped in this bottom piece here so as we keep turning around now it's completely sealed off and as we continue to turn this now we're starting to squeeze this gas over here and as we squeeze this gas we're now starting to pull in more suction again for the next style as we turn around we're pulling in more suction at the same time notice how this hole is squeezing down it's getting nice and small we're pushing out that gas through the very top we're pulling in more low pressure vapor at the bottom and that's all i got the rust is now that is pretty well stopped but that's how it works it's very very simple and it's important that we don't get any liquid to get any liquid at all when we try to squeeze that liquid it will break this or lock it up but it's very very simple component there's a little valve right here making sure it discharges it come back in and our suction line accumulator prevents us from getting any liquid directly in that there's a bottom plate that goes here that's missing and we can see our windings for a motor the rotor is inside the middle and our discharge has been sealed off just right here at the very, very top. Electrical plugs are right here. You can see our electrical plugs here. Uh, this is a very simple compre compressor. You'll see these a lot of times on window units. You are very popular with on PTAC units, personal terminal air conditioning systems. Uh, also ductless units, they really like to use these type of motors. Now they have these with the inverter series motors. They're using this where they can control the speed of these motors direct, but it's a very simple motor. Uh, the whole entire casing is high pressure. That's why it's so thick. Suction line accumulator always with it. Looks like a can discharge at the very, very top. Easy to identify.